What are the purposes for biblical boundaries? Why do they matter? Why should we even care about them? We're gonna be talking about that in today's episode. Hello, 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 ladies and gents, and welcome to this week's episode of the Bought and Beloved podcast. As always, it's your girl, Kirby Kelly, back at it again with another good word from the word. And this week, I wanna talk about boundaries. And I know it's one of those words where it's like, ah, Christian buzzword. I don't like that. I don't want to talk about that. Probably because you've either violated boundaries or crossed boundaries or disregarded boundaries or ignored boundaries, or maybe someone did that to you and they didn't respect your boundaries. And because of how it's been talked about in the past, especially just in like the Christian realm, um, it might be one of those things where it's like, oh, this is a little uncomfy. I only associate this with purity culture and maybe the the toxic parts of it versus the the biblical and the redeemed parts of it. I want to talk about all that and more today in today's episode. All right. We're just going to jump in. OK, Satan's voice is very prominent in our culture nowadays when it comes to boundaries, specifically disregarding the boundaries that God has given us in life. Boundaries such as how we treat ourselves, how we treat other people, how we think, how we speak, how we behave, the decisions that we make. Boundaries are a part of everyday life, not just relationships, like literally every single part of our life. And when it comes to that, Satan pushes us to rush. Satan wants us to rush where God has implored us to trust in the realm of boundaries, where Satan seeks to satisfy our needs instantaneously, right? Those insatiable desires that we have. Oh, I need to satisfy it right here, right now. Satan pushes us to do that. God desires to sustain us indefinitely, to sustain sustain us infinitely when it comes to the boundaries that he has set in place. Where Satan attempts to redefine and distort, God gives purpose and true meaning whenever he instills a boundary. This is especially true when it comes to boundaries in singleness, in dating relationships, in engagement seasons and marriage seasons. Like I know that when we think of boundaries, more often than not, that's what our mind gravitates towards. But who who would have thought, right, in this area where God has said this is permissible and this is not permissible, the enemy is seeking to steal, kill, and destroy that specific area? Does not come as a surprise to me, right? <laughs> the enemy wants to rush. The enemy wants to redefine. The enemy wants to push us to instant results and release. But it's actually in trusting in and waiting on God, surrendering and yielding to God's will and way that God uh, is going to actually sustain us in every single season and find genuine purpose and fulfillment within the boundaries that he has given us. Who would have thought that the author of life would know uh, the best way to navigate the boundaries? (laughs) the things that he says yes to, the things that he says no to. I mean, whenever we read scripture, and if you have read your Bible recently, you probably know that there are certain things that as Christians are allowed for us, are permissible, are encouraged for us, but there are other things where it's kind of a no-go zone, right? Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't behave in this way. Refrain from thinking and acting out in this way, speaking this way, treating other people, treating yourself in this way. Boundaries. Boundaries are essential to the life of the believer. I even write about it in my book briefly, but many of us um, have unfortunately been, or maybe are currently kind of living out uh, like our Adam and Eve era. You know what I mean? We're partaking in forbidden fruit. We're trying to define what is good and evil by our own standards versus the creator of the universe's standards, who has established order, who is perfect and understands what a perfect will and way is, plans and purposes are. But we often go outside of the boundaries that God has laid down and we try and define what is good, what is evil, what is wicked, what is permissible, only to end up more often than not, I know this is true for me, stuck in sin, stuck in shame, stuck living in lies, stuck living a life that I was never intended to live, one that is more often than not full of anxiety, full of depression, full of doubts and questions, self-condemnation even, self-hatred. I have been there. I have wandered outside of the boundaries of God. I've gone into enemy territory before and it never ends up well. The enemy is full of false 
promises, empty promises. And it's so interesting how he implores us to cross the boundary, to take a step over the line, to just ignore it for a few minutes and it'll all be fine. God's grace is there. Who, who even cares? Only to end up feeling more broken. Only to endure more trauma. To have more burdens that I have to shuffle through and carry and heal from eventually. There is nothing good outside of the boundaries that God has given for us to dwell within. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about um, the purposes of the boundaries, the beauty of the boundaries that God has given us, why they are there, what, why we should even listen to them, why we should even care about why God says, no, don't do that. We're going to dive into that today, all right? Hope is like spiritual oxygen, and a lot of people are gasping for air these days. Stress, anxiety, mental health issues, depression. Hope can seem kind of hard to find, but hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. If you are a follower of his, you have something the people around you really need. You have a hope story. How to tell it, what to tell, that's where www.yourhopestory.com comes into play. If you want to become more equipped in sharing your hope story with others and learn effective ways to preach the gospel with boldness through your testimony, please check out www.yourhopestory.com. That's www.yourhopestory.com. I have three points, like any good sermon preacher does, right? God has established boundaries and has uh, put perimeters in our life, in any area of life, whether it's our dating life, whether it's just like how we are living life, how we are thinking and behaving and speaking. Like God has established boundaries and perimeters to protect us. Boundaries are for our good. They are for protection. I don't know if you've ever been to a castle before. Um, I know that's like literally such a random question, right? Have you been to a castle before? I've been to a castle before. I was actually born in London, England. Hi, hello, pip pip cheerio. Uh, and I got to go there a, a few times since then. But specifically when I was 14 years old, I went to the United Kingdom. I went to England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And a lot of that was seeing historical buildings, historical castles and such. And oh my gosh, they were so cool. It wasn't just like a little castle set up. Some of them were, but some of them were like these fortresses, these mighty fortresses where people would live within, where people would dwell, where literal cities lived. They lived amongst or within these fortresses, these, these walls. And what were they meant to do? Think about it. What were these fortresses, these castle walls intended to do? They were intended to keep the people in, protect them, and keep the people out that were not supposed to be there. When God allows for there to be boundaries, when he sets up boundaries and perimeters in your life of where you are meant to dwell, where you are called to remain and be, and where he defines a line that you're not supposed to cross into, it is for your protection. Because whatever lies outside in enemy territory is not for you. It's not for your benefit. It's not there to serve you. And if we know anything about the enemy, John 10.10, 10, his purposes, the enemy's purposes are to steal, kill, and destroy you. So they're going to be fla like sending flaming darts, if you've read Galatians chapter 6 or Ephesians chapter 6, flaming darts of the enemy are coming from who knows where trying to get us, tear us down, take us down, defeat us. But when we are standing behind a mighty fortress, those things cannot hit us. They'll hit the walls, but they won't hit us. We are susceptible to falling into the pits of the enemy and getting wounded by the flaming darts and arrows of the enemy when we are wandering in territory where there is no protection. Like, I know that we have the armor of God on, but if God is not calling you to a specific battlefield that he has permitted, if you are stepping outside of a boundary and you are not suited up, <laughs> friend, you are going to get attacked. 
That's kind of what the enemy does. If you look at enemies in history where you have like the good guys and the bad guys, what are the bad guys doing? They're trying to take down the good guys. The same goes for the spiritual battle that we are in. When we obey the boundaries that God has given us, we get to firsthand experience his hand over us, his hand of protection, his hedges of protection. They surround us, right? That's what time and time again, especially if you read through the Psalms, we see this verbiage, this language of God is our mighty fortress. He protects us. He separates us from the evil that is outside. That is against us. That's trying to take us down, take us captive. To hurt who? The king, right? His presence borders us like a mighty fortress. The thing is, is that the enemy, and I know I mentioned earlier, he is so involved in culture, um, but the enemy has lied to our world that freedom, true freedom, lies outside of the boundaries. When in reality, true freedom is within the boundaries within the protective walls that God has given us. True freedom lies within the boundaries of God. It keeps the pain out. It keeps the chaos out. (laughs) Keeps the regret out. How many of us have struggled with that? Pain, chaos, regret. I know I have literally all three. It fosters room for peace to grow. So not only is there protection within the boundaries, my second point is that there is peace within the boundaries that God has given us. As much as God has established boundaries to protect us, he has established boundaries for our peace. Our peace of mind when it comes to anxious thoughts, when it comes to insecurity, when it comes to wondering, what if, what if, what if? I know even for me, whenever I've wandered outside of the boundaries that God has given me, whether it was in dating relationships, whether it was just being disobedient and being in places that God said, that is not for you. That dream, that ambition, that goal, that way of living and acting and pretending. Like whenever I've stepped outside of what God says is good, is glorifying, is meant for me within his perfect will. When I've gone out of my own way and stepped outside the boundaries and tried to redefine my life and and make it make sense for me, it never ended in peace. It always stirred up anxiety. It always stirred up depression. It always stirred up insecurity. It always stirred up these things that were never fulfilling. It, It compromised my standards every single time. It compromised my values every single time. It compromised my morals. It compromised my peace of mind. And it only fueled and gave room for doubt and self-hatred and fear and anger and and peacelessness. How many of us want a piece of peace, especially in today's world? I know that many of us are praying for peace. God, just give me peace of mind. God, I want peace in my heart. I want peace in my spirit. I want peace in my body. (laughs) Maybe we need to analyze, and I'm sure that there's many things that can contribute to us feeling just out of control and and in chaos and not within peace. But some of us need to humbly look at where we are standing and consider whether or not we have violated any of the boundaries that God has established for our life. Are you walking in the will of God? Have you violated a boundary? Have you stepped where you were not called to step, whether it was just not for this season or not ever? The beauty is, is that Jesus redeems. He redeems. He reconciles. When we come to him with a repentant heart, when we return to him, just like the prodigal son, when we return home to our father, he embraces us, invites us back in. We can have that peace and that assurance and that security that we can return to him and be welcomed by him, welcomed back to him as a son, as a daughter, redeemed right relationship with him. But it's when we go out and we wander and we violate boundaries, whether we just completely ignore them or we try and like find loopholes and poke some holes in them to see what we can get away with. You are not leaving room for peace to be in your life if that is where you are wandering. Peace is where God is. I want to read some scripture to y'all. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. It also talks about in Ephesians 2, 14, how Christ is our peace. And again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, 
that God has called us as Christians to live lives of peace, to be peaceable among other people. But in order to be peaceable among other people, we have to have a piece of peace ourselves, okay? Literally. His boundaries, his commands, his guidance, his instruction, it all cultivates for us to live peaceably with other people, with God, and even ourselves. I know for some of us, it is hard to just be sat alone in a room with you, yourself, and I, right? <laughs> and it's just your thoughts. And it's just that, that thinking and that thinking and that dwelling and that dwelling. And it's like, well, are you dwelling where God has called you to dwell? He has called for you to be a people of peace. If you have wandered, come back home. And if you are back home, start seeking out healing repent, be redeemed and reconciled unto God and start walking out the newness of life that he has for you. Peace is a part of that. One of the fruits of the spirit, if you've read Galatians chapter five, is peace. Peace is a fruit of the spirit, meaning that when he dwells within you and you dwell within him, within the boundaries, right? Peace is a natural fruit, a natural byproduct of you being in active relationship and presence and proximity with God and he in you. Peace. The boundaries that God gives us where he says, remain here, don't wander out there. It provides protection. The the purpose is to protect us. The purpose is to cultivate peace within our lives, being a people of peace, serving a God of peace. But lastly, point number three, it cultivates purity in our lives. Oh, Another one of those buzzwords, believe me, I know. Boundaries, purity. (laughs) Kirby, what are you talking about? We hate these words. Probably because of the trauma, right? Probably because people have abused you in your situation, maybe have just not met you with kindness alongside correction. Maybe did not fully convey the gospel and God's perfect design and order for all things. I mean, I, when I think of purity, I think a lot of our, our thoughts, I know for me, when I think of purity, what's the first thing that my mind goes to? Dating, relationships, sex, all those things, right? Probably same for you. But purity is a holistic thing for the life of a Christian. Pure in our thoughts, pure in our speech, pure in our attitudes, pure in our actions, sexual and not. We are called to be a pure people. A synonymous word for that is holy. And what's so interesting is that when we, when, when we look at that word purity, specifically from like a biblical context, if something is pure, that means that it is free from contaminants. I think about water, like purified water. The contaminants are filtered out of it. I think about gold. When gold is refined and purified, It is making sure that all the spots, all the blemishes, anything that could be marked on it is refined and and taken out of it by going through the fire. To be pure is to be rid of contaminants. Purity is, is a presence, a state of being, but it is also a process. Purity is a presence, a state of being, but it is also a process, something that we as Christians undergo. And this is why I love 1 John 1 9. I feel like I've mentioned this so much on the podcast recently because I talk about it a lot in my book, You Can Be Free. But I love what 1 John 1 9 says because for those of us who have wandered outside of the boundaries that God has given us in whatever capacity, in whatever way, it can be so easy to identify with what has contaminated you. Whether you sought it out yourself, whether someone thrusted it upon you, whether you wanted it or not, it's so easy to feel the burden and the weight of contamination and to just sit in that and to be ashamed of it, to be humiliated by it, to be angry at it, to then internalize that and begin to hate yourself and start thinking, well, why would God want me if I don't even want myself? so easy to go to that place. And I've been at that place. But here's the thing. First John 1, 9. God is faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and purify us from all 
and righteousness. When we repent and we seek forgiveness, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and purify us from all contamination. Whatever you have done, wherever you have been, wherever you have wandered, whatever boundaries you've crossed or people have crossed in your life, God can begin to purify that. Your body, your soul, your mind, your your lips, your heart, your spirit, God can purify that. And the beauty of boundaries is that it cultivates a life of purity. God is pure. God is holy. God is set apart. That's why there's boundaries. He is set apart from the things that do not belong, the things that are evil, the things that are wicked, the things that are not orderly, because he is a God of perfect order. And it's so great because of Jesus. It's so great, y'all. Because of Jesus, we through our faith and our belief and our confession and our profession of him, submitting to his lordship, believing in the power and the promises of the gospel, what Jesus did on that cross, death, burial, and resurrection, we not only get forgiveness, but we can be purified from the things that once clung to us, stuck to us, the things we once identified with, the sins that we once committed, the mistakes, the willing things, like all of it. And boundaries, what God permits and allows and what God does not permit and allow boundaries cultivate a pure holy life we are called to be a holy people we are holy because he is holy but it's only because of him it's only because of Jesus and we have to dwell and remain in proximity with him so that he can daily show up in our lives we have to we have to cultivate and allow him into our lives so that he can chip away and refine like gold with a fire like water going through a filter so he can set apart us from sin from what contaminates because that does not belong to us anymore now that we are in Christ Jesus That's him removing it from us, but that's also us making a decision to dwell and remain within the boundaries that he has called us to live in because that's where freedom is. That's where fullness is. That's where joy is. That's where protection is. That's where purity is. That's where purpose is. That's where all these things are. Good things, fruitful things, the things that we all so desperately crave and desire in this life, but think and are deceived that it's within outside of the boundaries that we're going to find those things. No, the devil is a liar. It is, it is within the boundaries. It is within the ways that God, the perfect God, the author and creator of all life, of all order, of all peace, protection, freedom, all these things. It is within his will and way for living life that we experience the things that we are longing for. Peace, joy, real life, fun, purpose. God is a God of joy, y'all. I promise you. There is joy, peace, and protection within the boundaries that God gives us. And if you have violated any of those boundaries, if you have stepped outside of them, or if somebody from enemy territory has tried to drag you out and you got caught up in the crossfire and the mess of it all, and you don't think that you can come back to God, I got good news for you. You can. Salvation is a gift and it is made available to all, but we have to choose to receive it. We can approach a just and and holy God who sits on a mercy seat. He will heal you. He will forgive you. He will free you. He will help you go through the work that you need to go through to become who he has called and created you to be. It's only with him, by him, for him, through him. And it is within the boundaries that we can enjoy the fullness of life. So that is what I wanted to tell all of you today. I love you guys. Boundaries are good. They they are good for you. They they serve you. They don't steal from you like the enemy does. They are so good. And if you want to know more about boundaries, read Ea Bible. And if you want to know more about boundaries and how to actually set them up and maybe identify ones that you violated and crossed in your life, I also wrote a book right there. It's called You Can Be Free. If you're watching, I have it right next to me. Um, And it's all about overcoming habitual sin, shame, lies of the enemy. Y'all already know this if you are subscribed to the podcast and you've been listening. I have a book out. It's been out for a minute now, but I really hope that you check it out and you enjoy it. And if not, 
I hope that this podcast was an encouragement enough for you to see the purpose and the beauty and the joy and the protection that God's boundaries are for your life. But I love you guys. I will see you next week with another episode here on the Bottom Beloved podcast on Tuesday. If you are watching it on Wednesday, if you are listening to it, uh, feel free to follow along. You can leave a review as well if you are listening on Apple. Um, that would be amazing. Please do that. Uh, and if you did get the book, please also leave a rating and a review for if you did get it on Amazon, on Audible, literally wherever. I don't know, Goodreads, Kindle, Barnes & Noble. Uh, that will also help so much with just getting this message of freedom and hope out there to so many people who need it. Strategy to overcoming sin and shame. So do that if you haven't already. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Love you. Bye.